Um, Mr. Bowman. Yes. Before I do that. <laughs> How are you? Is it just me? Yeah. We're in your right places. Sorry, I didn't have enough of you again. Are we ready? We're ready. Okay, we're going to call the committee meeting to order for September 19th, 2023 at 6.01 p.m. Dr. Ebert, who is joining us remotely. Good evening to board of trustees, uh, members of the admin team, attendants, and community members that may be in attendance as well. Uh, this evening, I have three items for the committee agenda. Uh, the first is something that's been sitting on my desk for almost about two years now. Uh, I've had engraved bricks and pavers sitting there as a reminder of a fundraising opportunity that was presented to me by uh, Coach Ed Dalton, again, not quite two years ago. Um, the issue was never should we as a district do this, uh, but how? Meaning, uh, what organization would be capable of fundraising for multiple entities? And I'm not going to get too much into that because in a moment we'll have Mr. Group uh, explain that to you. Um, but again, the idea there was to do something that could benefit multiple organizations within the district. Uh, early on, I did identify the McGuffey Alumni Association. Um, however, they, they needed some work to do before they could even uh, tackle this. I believe now they're in a great position. Uh, they have uh, reorganized, and now they are called the McGuffey Alumni Foundation. And uh, with that, tonight we have a presentation uh, on behalf of the McGuffey Alumni uh, Foundation uh, in the call group. And uh, Carl is going to speak to you about uh, some opportunities that would uh, require board approval and the school to take part in. So, Mr. Group, with that, I'll give it to you. Hello, Carl Group from South Franklin Township. I'm here on behalf of the Duffy Alumni Foundation. Uh, we've reorganized and uh, changed the name a little bit for some reasons. Uh, what I'm passing out is to Rick to say, oh, this is just an advertisement, this is an upcoming event. I want to get some more approval on the sale beforehand. The way this is going to work. And, uh, Am I supposed to pass these to the audience? Or? We can. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> um, if you look at this paper that I passed around, did everyone get one? Okay. Yeah. Um, up there where the blue stars are, it says six to hundred, sixty to hundred dollars for the sale of it. The risk costs around twenty dollars to manufacture. Uh, the uh, Alumni Foundation, we're going to take 10% of that. Um, then if you look up down at the list of sports and ag and uh, chorus theater, on your application or your order form, you will pick one of those. And it's going to be approximately $30 per brick will go to that organization. So it's, it's a great fundraiser. Um, we have a couple manufacturers that we're looking into. Um, the one fundraiser, or the one manufacturer has, yes, the polarengraving.com. They, uh, they'll help with the setup of the sale, the brochures, they'll take care of the, uh, and it's all free shipping from all the organizations. But um, you'll be able to order online. Um, all orders get approved by the foundation before they they go in. So if someone sends in an order for McGuffey Stinks, that isn't going to happen. So uh, we're going to go that route. Um, I'm, I'm going to pass a picture around here also. This is two of the fundraiser bricks. If you go into our stadium, um, 
you go to the stadium, Jersey Pavers are already there. My friend is pretty long. There's room for 1,400 bricks right now. That's what I was asking. I was sitting here wondering that. You pop those out and put in two bricks. So the bricks are four by eight. So uh, you pop those pavers out and put these pavers in. It's not that difficult to do. Um, and it's $30 will go to soccer, football, cheer, golf, tennis, volleyball, cross country track, boys basketball, marching band, girls basketball, wrestling, rifle, softball, baseball, ag, chorus, and theater. So uh, part of the committee wants to charge $100 a brick, but I think we're going to settle closer to $60 a brick. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Will the alumni foundation keep track of who goes to what, and then you will? We'll send give them a check. It won't okay. go through the business office. That's what, okay. That was my question. Right. All right. We just need permission to to have the fundraiser, basically, and install the bricks. So, can you just again, I'm sure your organization is talking about this, but maybe sixty dollars for this is for something we do that is specific insignia, that maybe a hundred for something like, like I'm thinking if you're doing. Like the Marines, right? Yeah, or something. Maybe those are, I don't know. Well, basically, it's twenty dollars for this. Well, the little skinny one is that last. No, it? they cost the same. Oh, okay. They cost, but they're all going to be that size. Is that correct? Four by eight right now. Okay. Um, we can expand. They, they, they can make a larger one and say, uh, Kim's Corner wants to put one in there as an advertisement. They can do it on a bigger one. Oh. Uh, these can go on a wall at a later time. Mm -hmm. You can build a wall, pop out more sidewalks. Uh, it's an ongoing money maker. But for now, the the idea is just to replace these for now. To get started. To get started. That's the easiest startup. Right. Right. Okay. That's. Yep. This is not awesome. off way out here when we come in. No, it's down into the stadium. Oh, well, well, I remember when we talked about it before. Right. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, that would be wonderful. We can start with 1400 right off the bat and just replace oh. like for like, and it's not a whole lot of. What's the cost to imprint something on, on this? Okay, $20 if you get one without a. Fancy drawing. Okay. You send your a picture of your dog, so they can put a picture of your dog, and you can say write in whatever you want to write in on that. That's six additional dollars. And the way we're looking at it, it's going to be sixty dollars. Uh, the organizations that are receiving the approximate thirty dollars will make twenty-four on that brick instead of thirty. I see. Because it costs six bucks to get a fancy picture right. yeah. on that. I see. So everything's going to, we're, we're not going to adjust as the foundation. We're not going to. Oh, it'd be easier on your end just to do. Yeah. Is that right? That makes sense. Right. How long will this brick be in place and be maintained? There's lifetime warranty on it. They use cemetery paint. There's some cemetery paint in there. The brick cracks, they'll replace it. That's every company says that. Um, the only thing when you install, there's a. Uh, like a concrete seal or they could put on it. They want it on their one time seal. So would you do that per brick or do you do that you like can. per section? You can. This this company is free shipping. If we'd order a thousand bricks and put it on a tractor trailer truck, ship it in here, unload it and it'd be ready to go in. Or you could order five bricks. You know, ship five bricks UPS. So then who actually takes care of putting putting yeah, them down and that that is something that we're going to have to work out. We haven't gotten that far. We wanted approval first. Right. I mean, um, if the maintenance people do it, I know Ag talked about they could do it. Um, we can get a committee <coughs> of people to put those in. Botex, yeah. Boag. Mm -hmm. well, about who and Grace? What's that? Who and Grace? The, the company we order them from. So yep. when you order it, you're ordering it with what you want on every single brick, and they send in a thousand or whatever. Right. Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. The company will set up. We can put it right on the uh, McGuffey's homepage or wherever, and someone can.
can go in there and order brick. But mm -hmm. your organization would still give approval before the brick is printed. It has to go through us before so they'll print it. Or right. whatever they right. right. So they'll charge you, it'll cost you $20 plus $6 if there's Right. And this is one of the only companies, the Polar is one of the only companies that allow to put in the official military insignia. You can get the Marine and then someone's name and date on it. Okay. Sounds like you're getting 10% of $60. Yeah, we'll get six bucks. And the other, they'll get 30. And it's costing 26. Right. Yeah, I don't think you should charge me <laughs> for something that is permanent. Well, you worked that out with my wife. She's a pretty important committee member. Yeah. <laughs> and your sister. Happy wife, happy wife. My sister, yeah. They are all things 60. Sister group. Yes, where sir. will, I might have missed you, where would we put these? Uh, there's a picture going around. This? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's at the stadium. That's a start. That's right. But where is this? It's a stadium. If you, go, the stadium. if you buy a ticket and go through the main gate, yeah. between the, okay. that, that was put in there when they built the stadium. It was put in for this reason. Okay. The next one. Okay. Way back so, Mr. Gross, so, Mr. Gross, um, we're good if we put that on the agenda for next month. Are you good with that, or do you need us to do something? I would love to have it now, so people can, can order for Christmas or our. We're not Christmas. spending money, right? So nope. we no. should be able to add that, correct? We would have to have somebody make a motion to add it to the agenda, and we would need to vote on that. So they make the motion. To we have to do that actually during the regular, regular meeting. meeting. So during the regular okay. meeting, we'll need somebody to make a motion to add that to the agenda, and then once that motion passes, then we'll have to. Go on the actual, but we can do that. Okay, sounds awesome. good. Do you have any idea how many bricks are available? 1400. In that space right there, you can put 1400 times $30 to go to the sporting, or it can go to ag, forest, theater. 42000 Yeah. 42000 Very good idea. Very good idea. Well, Mr. Dalton started it two years ago. And we finally. Right, we'll pick it up. Yeah, Thank we're going to try to get it done. Thanks. Awesome. Thank Sounds you. Do you need the papers back? Or? Okay. I don't have them. But do you stack? Do you not need the brick? No, I don't need the brick. You don't need to break it away. Really? I'm oh, sorry. Four bricks. They're over there. The two are over there. So, Michelle, if you'll do that, I want to see if you can make a motion to put on the agenda the McGuffey Alumni Foundation fundraiser as presented. And where do you want me to do that at? We're at right after the right after presentation. Before public comment. Any recommendations? No. No. Okay. To add the McGuffey Alumni Foundation. A motion to, well, to add to the agenda. Yeah, a motion to add to the agenda to approve the McGuffey yeah. Alumni yeah. Foundation fundraiser as presented. Thank you. Sure. Okay, Dr. Ober, thank you so much, Mr. Group. You did a great job, and thank you. We're thank excited. You. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for taking this work on and for their work to this point. Uh, item number two, um, at the September board meeting, uh, the board tabled the recommendation to approve the uh, voluntary 2023 Pennsylvania Youth Survey, which was called PAYS. I think at the time, when we first did this last month, uh, there were several questions uh, about um, student identities and the sharing of information. Uh, again, this is a survey that's given every other year for grades 6, 8, 10, and 12. So uh, here tonight's professional information uh, regarding the survey is high school principal, Mr. Mark Bones. Mr. Bones? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the Pennsylvania Survey, um, as Dr. Oberg said, it's um, 
something that we've administered. We haven't administered, I think, in so I think 2018 was the last time we administered. It was before the pandemic, and we hadn't administered it since. So it's an every other year type of thing. But I got, put some information together about what it is, what information is discussed on the survey with the students. Um, where does that information go? How does it remain confidential? What is done with this information? So I tried to, and how that would actually work here to administer. So I think that covers all the boxes, but if you have any questions, um, I've probably administered this, I don't know, in 20 years, 10 times, nine times, eight times, some, something like that. A um, Couple things, um, the pay survey um, is something that's done statewide. Um, it's administered actually through the Pennsylvania State University College of Health and Human Service, uh, Health and Human Development. They're the ones that oversee it. So it works, that information goes back to Penn State and that from there it's disaggregated out and filtered through and then sent back as information and data to the counties, particularly. County Department of Health is really who it goes to, okay? So the outside partner for the survey is Penn State. It's confidential and anonymous, meaning that their students do not identify themselves in any way, shape, or name, form as to their name, uh, gender. Uh, it, may, it might ask for grade. It's going to ask for grade level, so you can disaggregate that because but it's no personally identified. No personal information. identified information, and and I understand and I respect the confidentiality issue, um, particularly when I go over what it's going to address and what it's going to survey. So I certainly understand people that have concerns about this. Um, you know, I think it's something that we've done for the rationale was to provide funding. The data taken from this goes to Penn State, it's disaggregated on a statewide basis back to the counties to cover funding for things like the Washington County Department of Human Services, who take care of everything from abuse hotline, domestic violence, drug and alcohol crisis, human trafficking, mental health crises, protective services, sexual assault, suicide prevention. That's just things that the Washington Department of Health does. I mean, it's, it's a considerable list of, of things that they're doing and providing throughout the county. Um, it also goes back to southwestern Pennsylvania, human services. They handle mental health, particularly of students uh, in crisis. If we have a student here that becomes and, and that occurs during the school day, um, I think at all levels. Um, the student is in crisis, we will partner with an outside agency to provide that one individual support for them on a 24-hour basis, mental health, a kid's um, making ideations of suicide and things like that. We, did, we, we were responsible for acting upon that and handing it off to the professionals. Those are people who provide that service to us. They're our partner. Um, Washington County Drug and Alcohol. Prevention. Once again, we have students who have violations that involve drug and alcohol. They have to go through an assessment by them, right? So they're handling that countywide for all the people, not only in the high school, middle school populations, but countywide. Um, and then uh, Centers for Domestic Violence. So all these things, all these agencies, they need data to go get funding. So the student information that's collected is collected on a county level, sent back as sort of like block grants to those agencies to do that. But they need data to justify their budget. And this survey helps to provide that data. So is there any questions about sort of how that works in that process? I have a couple questions. Okay, that's not all I, I that's not all I have to say oh, about it. One else. Go ahead. Okay, let me go over what answer my question. Okay, I might answer it. But um so in terms of it, uh, the way it's administered here, uh, parents can review the survey. Uh, I don't have the surveys. We haven't submitted for the surveys yet. We have to agree to doing it before they'll send us the surveys, which is sort of, I look to try and get a survey. It says on their website, you can get a, a copy of the survey. It's not easy to get. You have to jump through some hoops to get it. Okay. okay. Um, the PACE survey asks questions, specific questions, about youth health and development in the school, the home, and the community on these topics. Alcohol, alcohol use, drug use, tobacco use, violence, and mental health. Those are the things that those questions are tied to. And they go on the basis of those 
topics in your school, at your home, and in your community. So it sort of goes through all those types of questions. Um, the way it's been administered here in the past is that parents receive a one call and say, we're going to be administering this on this day, the, the paid survey to these grades on this day. Typically it be given in an English classroom because the English classroom, every student has English every year. It's the only content area that they have every, every year. So we've used the English classroom in the past. Um, at one call informing them, there's also, we'll have a link on our website informing them that they can opt out of their child taking this survey through filling out a Google form. It'll right there on the website, it'll say pay survey. And they click on there, they click on the opt out button right there, collects their information, the name of them and their student, and then they're, they're, they, those kids will be pulled out of that classroom that day that's administered. Do you have a form that says that you're online? One second. Not the I'm sorry, not while he's presenting from the community, from the community part. Um, the, we could we could have well we could have a hard copy form, but actually things you give the high school students and middle school students forms don't always make it home, and don't always make it out with a lot of context. If I do it with a Google link through a one call, then I know the parents will see the information in its entirety, right? And then it's a lot easier for them to opt out right there. Like we we use forms, but we tend to move away forms for everything because um, the paper just doesn't make it home. Parents' intentions are no longer not because they didn't get the paper, they didn't know anything about it, and their kids are already taking the survey. So the one call directing them to the website, filling out the form on the website is actually the most expedient way to get actually in communicating with parents as opposed to communicating with a parent through a student. So we try and make it that, that, that clear. Um, yes, we have done paper copies to do that, but I just – that's not sort of like the most successful way. If I'd have school pictures, I know the best way to do that is through online now. It's not through a piece of paper. It's just sort of where, where parents are at, too. Um, it's a passive consent, meaning that, and that's dictated by the, the pay survey. Passive consent means you opt out of it. You're considered to be taking it until you opt out of it, not opt in it. You understand the difference between passive and active consent. Um, so far, eight out of the 14 districts in Washington County, I was able to pull this off the website, eight in Washington County have consented to participate in this for the year. Six have not committed towards this date. Um, they have until probably the beginning of December to make that final decision. Maybe some of them haven't done it. Maybe some of them are looking at it like we are. Is this something that we're interested in doing or not? Um, but um, they've kept pretty uh, accurate records in terms of who's taking it and who's not taking it. Last year in 2021, obviously two years ago, uh, 1,072 schools throughout Pennsylvania participated in this survey. So that would have been middle school, high schools because the age groups are readily identifiable. So um, like I said, I certainly understand it does ask sensitive questions and sensitive on sensitive topics that include a child's home and a child at school and a child anywhere in the community. Um, but that data, once again, would come back from here. It'd be administered one day. If a kid said, I don't want to take this and wanted to stop right there, well, then we would just, you know, the, the teacher's instructed, just collect it, right? And, and this, the kid stopped where it's at. They can skip questions that they want to skip. They would be told that ahead of time. Um, if it makes them uncomfortable to answer and they start down it and start and then say, I don't want to finish this, then they would be given that ability to walk out. We start, this isn't going to be like somebody hovering over them to make them do it. Uh, it's voluntary, and the kids know it's voluntary, right? But it's something that we'll, we will pass out unless they've been all, opted out before that. Then at that point, they raise their hand and say, I, I don't want to take this, then they'll be collected. No questions asked. No pressure to participate. I think that's a very important factor of it. Um, because once they it starts asking sensitive questions, then maybe that causes them some anxiety. And that's not necessarily what we're trying to accomplish either. Right? So um, all that data is aggregated from all the schools participating, goes back to Penn State, is then used as a data source for the counties to go out and solicit funds based because those, those results are shared back to the County Department of Health. And they can say, hey, we can justify the risk factors for 
this age group in this community is here based on this data. So is there any questions I could ask I about it? A couple of my questions. Okay. I do have more. First of all, we as a school don't do anything to like incentivize participation. No. Okay. That would be that would be tainting it one yeah. way or another. Is it voluntary? You shouldn't. Yeah. We don't. We're local people is next. Okay. And then, is it a paper survey or is it an online survey? It's a paper survey. We would request to do a paper one. Okay. And then, um, can parents request? a hard copy to opt out. So like if you're putting it on there but I don't know, I don't have good internet where I am and I call and I say, yes. can I get a paper copy of the opt out? Yeah, we say, come on up, here's a copy that you could preview and opt your kid right. out. And I would give them like two weeks before that. Like right. I wouldn't say like, hey, we're taking this on Tuesday, you can come up. Today. Yeah, you can come back up until yesterday. That, yeah. That's not the way we're doing it because, you know, I recognize the fact, I've been doing this a couple of years, so I recognize the fact that you, you have to give time for people to reply and if they don't reply, you didn't, maybe you didn't give enough time to do to do what they intended. Mm -hmm. Right? Let their intentions match where you can spread that out to. Because right. you're trying to be transparent about it. Yeah. And then my next question, this may not even be something you know, but this particular survey is obviously geared towards those age groups, to, just, to look at risk factors for those age groups for those counties. And the counties, in my understanding of this, the counties are using that data in order to determine, make, de make decisions about funding for specific services in their county. Exactly. Do the, do, do they, does the state or the state college also survey other age groups through different data collection devices in order to look at risk factors among other age groups, or is it just solely the only ones I've heard, the only ones I've heard is this group, this six, eight, ten, and twelve age groups. I'm sure, but to answer your question, maybe I'm going to project a little bit and say that adults for the for the younger age group or the adult age group, they may collect that information on a walk-in basis and use that as the data. You know, that's the other. If you operate a homeless shelter for domestic violence. I guess my question is more yeah. geared for, and again, this may not be something that you know or that's even in your your wheelhouse, so yeah. but like we're not targeting just our youth in the state for no. this data. I mean, that, yeah, I think you're collecting that based on the number of participants that use that service. I'm sure they collect that data and send mm -hmm. that back because these agencies are all trying to find funding for the roles in which they play in each county. Mm -hmm. um, and it's you know it's, it's things unfortunately that go on that nobody really. You know, we all want to care for people who are in this vulnerable situation, depending on whatever that may be. Um, but I'm sure they, like the people who are actually um, going to that location to get that service at a domestic shelter or a women's shelter or whatever it may be, I'm sure they're collecting that data. We have this many people this month right. for this, and that would be another set of data also going back to the state, which would ask them, obviously, more participation, more need would result in more money coming back. Thank you. I'm sure they did. I mean, you have to take at some point, right? Right. This um, is like when we test, we test this grade, this grade, this grade to see where the progression is. I'm just wondering, maybe that's how they did it. Yeah, I, it obviously somebody that's not in eighth grade but is in ninth grade can still get the services. And well, yeah, and two years time. later, think about yeah. it. Yeah. In some ways, it. If you started in sixth grade, two years later you're in eighth grade, and two years later you're in tenth grade, and two years later yeah, you're in twelfth grade, it's almost like the same cohort going through. My question was more about for people who who view this as like the state targeting our youth specifically. Yeah. I don't think that's the purpose. I think they're collecting data from other age groups by other sure. means. This is just the means by which they're using to collect data from that age group. Yeah. Because they're all in school, or mm -hmm. most of them are. Yeah, and I, um, like I understand the confidentiality of the, and the nature of this survey and how it may be a, a concern for people. Um, if, it, but I also understand the the services that are providing to try and seek funds to help in their mission that they care for those problems every day. Well, and anybody who's ever done anything with funding, if you're doing, especially if you're applying for grants or anything like yeah. that, you have to have data. That's yeah. part of the process. Yeah, because you can't get it. You can't get any federal money without a data source. Right. So, I, I, you know, whichever way you guys decide on it, I just want you to all follow with that lead. I understand the concerns of it. Okay. You said that 
Um, they don't ask for your gender. I don't gender. They do. I have Gen a copy is of all gender, is, is, I have a copy of all what, the questions. What particularly? See, I couldn't get it that I went through it and trying to find the copy. What do yes. they ask for? They or, ask, um, are you female, male, or other? Okay. So that's one of the questions. That they okay. definitely ask your gender. And, and then grade. No, they don't ask. They ask for your, yeah. How old are you? What grade are you in? Are you Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin? Okay. What is your race? And then your gender. And um, think of where you live most of the time. Which of the following people live there with you? Mother, father, step-parent, foster parent, grandparents, other adults, siblings, other children. Then, I mean, there's, there's a number. I mean, there are... But they don't have to put in, like, their birth date. No. Their and you can answer the question because my concern was, so they're taking these on a Chromebook. Each student mm -hmm. is, no. well, that's, that's, you answered my question. Yeah. If it was a Chromebook or a hard copy, because if it was a Chromebook, each student has a specific Chromebook assigned to them. Yeah. And it could be, they could be identified yeah. through yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so, yeah. so, but, yeah. But it was, I'm yeah. today. Well, I, I went to two different sites. I went to the Epic site too, and it yeah. said if you it said on the Pays website if you want a copy of it, go here. And then I went to the Epic website, and I'm like yeah, looking on like, the different links to get it. I'm like, where right. can I get a hard copy of this? Yeah. Because we haven't given it in two years. I'm trying to recall what was on there. Yeah. Um, but like I said, and it I, does go through alcohol, tobacco, and drug questions. Mm -hmm. And then it goes through, ask questions about your school, neighborhood, and community where you live. But not specific, like not, like you're not saying just what school, school you went to. Just, yeah, just yeah. school, not McGuffey yeah. High School. And it goes to questions, ask about your family. Mm -hmm. uh, when answering these questions, please think about the people you consider to be your family. Um, and there's quite a few questions about that. Um, you and your friends, actions related to alcohol and drug use and sleep, experiences at school, in your home, your community, bullying and abuse, and then feelings and attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that the, have to be? The mental health part of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if they answer yes to those questions about suicide, does that have to be reported? There's no way. No. It's anonymous. No, it, it, it's not no tied way. to anybody. So I, okay. in reality, I shouldn't know who that. Uh, unfortunately, in this situation, I wouldn't know Correct. who that person was. But, um, like I said. Well, I was just sitting yeah, here yeah. thinking the same thing, man. If my child was sitting there saying I often feel suicidal, I'd like to know that. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, there is, and that was why I asked about how it's given, mm -hmm. because I mean, obviously, if I'm using a specific machine, that can speak back to me. Well, that. Right, that's why I have to. But if they're doing any paper, we would only do paper and pencil. Yeah, and they're not giving anything that would be able for them to identify. It's collected and boxed up here and, and sent back. So okay. they, they give you all the shipping and everything, and you just put the label on, it goes back to Penn State. I want to say I appreciate um, the one called parents with the announcement of the day of the survey. I appreciate the link on the website for parents to be able to opt out. I appreciate parents being able to call and get a hard copy of the of the if they want it. Um, I I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah, it's a, and those are things we've always done. Like I mean, obviously the link on the website is a little bit different. We've usually done in the past a, a paper handout, but actually, like I said, those don't make it home all the way. So the the best transparent way to do it is actually well, one I call them that. and then direct them to the resource. So um, like I said, I, I certainly understand that some of the school districts will be doing, some of them won't. I understand both sides of that coin. Um, if there's not any other questions about the paid survey, um, the second thing I have on your desk there, um, on your in front of you there, I was fortunate here just a few days ago to get informed that McGuffey High School has received a designation from the college board uh, as to be on the school honor roll based on our academic performance. Um, here uh, as a school last year based on the class of 2023, which were obviously last year's seniors. Um, this designation is a new program put out by the AP. I would say that it's not an easy designation to uh, acquire. 
Um, so let me talk a little bit about there. In there is the, the certificate, a copy of the certificate, a copy of the letter that went back here. Um, there's a page with a couple pieces of data. We are a bronze, a bronze um, awardee. There's platinum, bronze, uh, platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. And then there, there, there's nothing. Um, so let me explain each one of these categories. And, and I shared this with my staff today. And every, you know, I think it, it was good to recognize the teachers, obviously recognize the students that helped to contribute to the success of this. This is not an easy thing to attain. Um, if you look at college culture, sort of the first category, in order to get this recognition, 40% uh, of your students have to have taken an AP course during their uh, four years in high school. Um, we have 14 AP course offerings here at this school that are continue to be funded by your your efforts here as a school board. Um, our AP programs are expensive uh, to fund them. Um, but they're also very successful. You can see that we have 48, almost 50%, which would be silver stats. We have 48% of our students in the class of 2023 that took an AP class, class um, during their four years of high school, which is um, a, a, an outstanding number. Uh, it, it really is. College credit, in order to get this recognition, 25% or more of your students have to have had and actually transferred their, their um, performance on that assessment into college credit, meaning they had to have an, a, a qualifying score of three or higher. So, you know, 25 is the minimum. So this means that it's not only they're taking it based on their knowledge and gaining that, but they're also transferring that over to a college environment and receiving that advanced standing. And the last one, and it's one of the most difficult areas to acquire, but one that I think we can work on with some structural changes to improve on, is 2% or more of our graduating cohort took five or more AP exams during their high school experience, and at least one of those exams was taken in ninth or 10th grade oh, wow. because they don't want you sort of taking them all at once, right? That typically, all AP classes are offered in 11th and 12th grade. We only have one that is offered as early as ninth grade, and that's AP computer science principles. Uh, the only prerequisite for that is algebra. So it's made to fit in there. Unfortunately, a lot of my kids wait until their senior year to take that, where I can make some structural changes and say, let's take earlier for the kids who want to do that. Now that I know this is sort of one of the criteria, I can make that adjustment. This is a new program. It's just this year. So not knowing sort of what the qualifications are, um, we sort of got this recognition blind just based on our, the way in which we operate. Um, but I, I think it's a wonderful appreciation for the students and last year's cohort. Remember that class of 2023, that was the group that is freshmen. They were on a hybrid schedule for three quarters of the year. They came to school two days a week typically. And that left a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of things that were probably missing in foundational courses along the way. So they probably weren't at their maximum potential, right? So that's the group that really paid for it because they were freshmen, which means they were probably in algebra, biology, some very fundamental courses, uh, basic English and, and things like that. So by the time they became seniors, they were able to have this performance. Now, obviously, this performance would tend to scope up. Now that the group behind them, this year's yeah. current seniors, did not, they were eighth graders when that hit. So maybe it has less of an effect. You could make an argument that that's, eighth grade was even more fundamental. I think that this, the trajectory of, of this is something um, that goes up. So I think it's a, it's a great designation for our school. It's a great designation for our students. It's a great designation for the staff and faculty that teach those, those subjects. And like I said, we have 14 advanced placement options um, here, which uh, allows us to punch above our weight in, you know, our size. We punch above our size academically. Um, here, the programs that we have put in place and you've continued to support and fund are powerful things for students to have those experiences. There's a lot of research by the College Board that if you take one AP class, you know, they put out all the study. If you take one AP class in anything, that your chances of graduating from college in four years are 20% greater. Um, I can relate to you personal experience. Young man graduated two years ago, went to Penn State, Maine, ran into him at work. I ran into the parents that I just want to thank you for, for, for some of the programs that my son has had. Um, he was able to get a whole full semester of 15 advanced standing credits because he had taken, I think he had taken nine AP classes here, 
had seven qualifying scores, ended up having a whole semester of advanced standing at Penn State University main campus and is able to save not only the $30,000 for the semester, but also graduate a half a semester early. And, you know, if you don't think that this school can't predict, can't prepare your kid for, for college or university, then you're really, you're looking at something that is not, not relevant. Our kids who go to school, this school does a great job at preparing kids for the next level. They do. And a lot of our kids walk in there with advanced standing ahead of time. So, you know, as long as we continue, um, you know, to, to have these programs, I think we're sort of, maxed out of what we can provide right now. But they are very powerful agents of change in those kids' lives, and they make their lives a lot better, in particular this young man, but there's there's a lot of cases here. So it's money well spent. Um, I believe in preparing, you know, my job is to make sure they have as many doors open. If you want to go to four-year college or university, that door is going to be open to you. You're going to have the experiences throughout. If you want to go to trade school, that's my job to prepare you for that as well. If you want to go to, into the military, you want to go into the world of work, you want to start your own business. Like, um, but obviously since we're about 45% of our kids go to four-year college and university, we have a program that's still um, very vigorous in terms of preparing them. So it's a great designation. I wanted to share that with you here, shared it with my staff, shared it with community today on Facebook. Um, we're just, we're really happy to have that designation and show what we can do to prepare kids. Well, congratulations to well, the teachers and the students. Thank you. Administration, too. Uh, great job. Thank you. Do you have any ideas what percentage of schools are able to achieve this? No. Very few. Because it's the first year, that's one piece of information I was looking for today because I wanted to be able to say that. Obviously, how many schools receive this designation, how many are platinum, how many are gold, how many are silver, how many are bronze. Um, I, th that's not out yet. But the one thing is that looking at that criteria, if you have 40% of your kids taking advanced placement offerings as one of the criteria, I would say that's a tough, that's a tough challenge. But even in a bigger, in a much bigger school, uh, right? We have as many AP course offerings as, as like I said, Trinity, Canon, Mac. They may have one or two more. Um, everybody else, we are way above them. Well, Everybody and then else if you go down, stuff. it's going to get even more just more challenging, right? Sure. Because then it's at least 25% of them who receive qualifying credit. Yes. And then from there, at least 2% or more that have taken five, mm -hmm. at least five, and some of those in ninth and 10th grade. I mean, you're, so you're, it's getting more and more. Yeah. That last one, I think a lot of people are going to do some changing in programming uh -huh. to sort of make that one to skewer a little bit more towards that way. But uh, I'd be happy to come back and bring you back some more. Um, like like that on the AP programming here, we keep very good. The College Board provides us very good information about our participation rate, about our qualifying score rate, uh, about the the number of AP scholars we have, AP honor students. Like we have all that information. And I, I can maybe wrap that in a, into a future presentation about exactly what those programs are, and maybe even some teachers come in and talk about their courses. We've done that in the past. Whenever we brought in a new course, we brought on AP. English language, probably, I'm going to say it's about six or seven years ago, we brought in AP statistics, brought those teachers in to explain exactly what those courses are. So, um, and maybe we could just, in a, in a future board meeting, we could put together something where we could, you could really learn a little bit more about that powerful tool. Thank you. Thank you. Do you look to see if we're going to qualify? Qualify. For this issue? It's too, it's too early, no, because we don't know that the kids won't take the test until May. So we all know who's going to what their score is for the advanced standing there. I know what my what my numbers are um, here, but that that, that that I can disaggregate that all once the score results come back. I'm, I'm sure we'll this be still above up. this number. Yeah, yeah, we'll punch above that. Yeah. They test in the spring, is what I meant. Yeah, and then yeah, you'll May. Say, yeah, they're not scored until yeah. summer. On one on we usually get that first week of July. Mm -hmm. On like on AP tests. And believe me, in that week we're giving like a lot of tests, and um, every test has to be on the designated day. Like you're either a.m. p.m. Like eight U.S. History is Friday, May 6th, a.m. That's going to be that spot this year, next year, and it's it's, uh, it's not movable. But um, like I said, um, I think it's a it's a great recognition of the efforts of the students and the staff. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And again, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ever? Okay. Again, thank you, Mr. Bonus, for first the information and the research on the PACE survey. And also, congratulations to you, uh, the teachers, all of the students uh, that participated, and for the recognition of a 2023 advanced placement honor roll. Uh, the last item tonight, I have um, a place on the agenda two new policies for first read this evening, uh, and a third policy with no revisions but it does require a uh, board approval. So first there is policy 137, uh, that's regarding uh, home education. Uh, section 1327.1 of the PA school code uh, was recently updated uh, August 21st, 2023. Um, this is designed to permit a parent, a guardian, or even a legal a custodian to be the supervisor overseeing the child's home education. Um, primarily, the difference from the uh, board-approved program that we already have in place um, to now is that in the past, the board approved the program of how instruction uh, was to be implemented, and now that supervisor, who I said could be a parent, guardian, um, uh, or, or legal custodian, uh, must su submit either a notarized affidavit or an unsworn declaration to the superintendent. Um, but pretty much when you look at uh, the purpose, the procedures, everything that was in place before, according to the BEC, um, the, the requirements really haven't changed any other way. So that's the first item. Any questions about that? No, just um, the, I know starting this year that there was a change in the law that starting this year students could participate, home education students could participate in co-curricular academics. Um, including um, career and technology education. Um, so does the policy cover that? I mean, I know that the policy basically says we're going to follow the law as it's written. So it should cover it, but I just want to make sure. And then the other question I had was, I noticed that in the revision, we dropped, at least if I'm looking at it correctly, we dropped the language about the loan of instruction materials and participation in programs of Western Area Career and Technology Center. Um, and I, again, I understand that the way that it's written and that we are going to follow the law means we will abide by those things. But here's my concern in dropping that particular language. The average homeschool parent is not reading the law. And how else are they going to be aware that those opportunities are available? Um, you know what I mean? Well, it, yes, okay. certainly. And I think um, as we changed this, uh, I would say a little more than a year ago to reflect that, right, so that um, we would allow for those students to participate, uh, for example, with the Western area. Um, they probably weren't looking at our policy to begin with. That's something that we – um, would have to make more, you know, we have to communicate more from a school perspective than it would be from the policy perspective. Okay. And um, Amy also told us, I'm sorry, Ms. Trump also told us that there's another policy for it. It does with that. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, the second policy, and I'm going to, in a moment, ask uh, Ms. Trump to join in on this one. Uh, so you're probably looking at this and thinking, okay, so policy 130, or, I'm sorry, policy. Uh, 718, which is service animals in schools. Didn't we just pass something similar to this? Uh, by the way, this is also a first read, no board actions required. Uh, this is different. So we passed um, in February of 2020 policy 718.1, and then we revised it actually in March of 2022, um, which refers to therapy dogs in the school and not service animals. So with that, I'm going to have Ms. Shrimp uh, take you a, a little bit deeper into understanding the differences, but also why, as a district, we need to uh, have this approved. So Ms. Shrimp? Thank you, Dr. Oberg. So um, first, I, I had a conversation with administration where people are starting to talk about wanting to train their dogs to come to school with emotional support animals. Uh, emotional support animals are not service animals. Service animals are specifically animals who are trained to, the one that we would all be the most familiar with would be like a seeing eye dog or a seizure sniffing dog or something like that. That's a service dog. 
um, there's, there's specific requirements for a service dog to be in school, and the service dog must be related to the disability in which it serves, and this policy actually lays all that out. And just so you all know, it was not a typo. The ADA was changed in 2010 that service animals can be dogs or miniature horses. <laughs> so that wasn't a typo on my behalf. Like, you, you can have a miniature horse as a service, I guess a service horse is what you would call him, but they, they have to be between 70 and 100 pounds. The facility has to be able to handle their weight. They have to be house trained the same as the dog, it's things of that nature. I, I've never seen a service horse, but we do, we do have to include them because under the ADA they are, they are considered service animals. Um, the big thing that, that I'm seeing is from my other districts are people are confusing service dogs with emotional support dogs, and people are saying, well, I'm going to bring my dog in and train him as a therapy dog. Well, therapy dogs are also a different, a, a different animal, so to speak, and you have a policy that covers therapy dogs, and they're brought in when there's an issue where you need to have a dog to, like, you, I see them in deaths or, you know, tragedies, tragic situations where they bring in a therapy dog. But, I mean, I, I had a district, and, and I told Dr. Obergus today, and I'll share it with all of you, where a teacher had a dog at her desk and was calling him a, a therapy dog. He was in her desk drawer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the two dogs that we have, CB and Gus, those are what? therapy dogs. Therapy dogs. Therapy dogs. Mm -hmm. So we as a district pay their owners. So therapy, mm -hmm. well, service dogs are trained to do a certain, I'll go through each. Service dogs are trained to do a certain thing, like seeing eye dog is trained. Right. Help is, right. Therapy dogs are trained, also trained and have certification to be like well, well behaved and to let people pet them and don't care if people pull on their ears or yank on their tail. They also go through rigorous training. Emotional support dogs do not go through that kind of training. And that's one of the reasons why you don't want people to start bringing in emotional support dogs because there are issues with legal and litigation and everything along that nature. So as service animals, are certified as service animals, right? Oh, right? They have to wear the vest when they're quote unquote working. Part of the problem though really is that people can now buy the vest on Amazon. Uh -huh. Not they, they're for an individual. Correct. Correct. Service dogs are for, for individuals and the therapy dogs yeah, can be everyone. You can have a service, because they're training service and dogs specifically, but I'm thinking of to help people who suffer with like seizures. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing. Right. So, but those are working and I quote unquote working dogs. And they, they have to, they're, they're pinned to someone's specific disability. So, like, Ms. Jackson, Ms. Ms. Jackson couldn't bring my service dog to school because she doesn't have my disability. And that's what this policy covers. Correct. Okay. So, this wasn't brought about because somebody wanted to bring their miniature horse. Correct. <laughs> Correct. There this is was no, just an, uh, an addition. Well, my, and my concern is because there's rumblings of people wanting to bring animals to have the policy in effect before someone brings the animal, then someone's saying you're not discriminating. Well, I hate to play the devil's advocate, but okay, what if I'm allergic to dogs? Or my child is allergic, like my child is allergic to dogs, and has a classmate who needs even a service animal. Like, how are we as a district handling that? Or are we prepared to handle that? And yeah, I'm not expecting you to answer that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I would say that too, but I just was curious, you know, if we're putting a policy in place, we probably also then need to be thinking about some kind of a protocol to handle a situation mm -hmm. like that at the same time, correct? Uh, and yeah, that, I would think that'd be correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree with that, and I think that's one of the concerns about people bringing in emotional support dogs is because you do have children. Like, it's one thing to have one child who needs a, a service animal. It, if, if everybody brings in their emotional support dogs, you're going to have dogs everywhere. Right? <laughs> Does anybody, I, think, I think I need emotional support dogs to board me. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me about that? No. Or, or please don't ask me about miniature horses because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Billy said, what was it? Was it Baltimore or Philly testing the guy that they would have let in because what he wanted to bring in emotional support alligator? Yeah. <laughs> That's on a plane, too. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, Dr. Edberg, anything else? Uh, just the last item then is there are three policies for approval tonight. They're policy 19, 19.1, and 19.2. Uh, there are no changes to the policies. It's actually been under the, the uh, advice or recommendation of the PAFPC, which is the Pennsylvania Association of Federal Program Coordinators, that it's good practice to review and approve the parent and family engagement uh, policy annually. Um, 
Um, the last time, well, so we adopted the policy in April 2019. Um, and this year, I think I've mentioned this to the board once, in the spring of this year, uh, we're going to be uh, going through a federal programs audit. So uh, it was advised to me about, by a recent meeting of the Association for Federal Programs uh, to just have this approved. Uh, I've looked through it. There's no changes. So this that's, is just going to have... That's one for each building, right? There's one for... There's, there's the overall... Uh, 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 engagement uh, policy, which is 19, and then uh, Claisel's 19.1, and Joe Walker's 19.2. That's correct. Thank you. And that is all I have uh, for community tonight. Woo-hoo! All right. So at that point, um, we are going to adjourn the committee meeting at 6.57. We will reconvene for regular meeting at how much time do we need? 7? 7.05? How much time do you need? 7.05. 7.05.
Mr. Wilson, if you let me know when you're ready. We are ready. Oh, I'm so sorry. We are not ready. Hold off on the countdown. Wasn't that good? One ringy dingy. Two ringy dingy. We're aging really ourselves. You realize that. <laughs> <laughs> you realize there are people who have no idea what that means. Start. I know. <laughs> That's how old I am. That's a shame. <laughs> Okay, we are calling the regularly scheduled board meeting for 10-19-2023 to order at 7.06 p.m. Roll call, please. Mr. Neves? Yeah. Present. Mr. Hardin? Here. Mr. Mr. Kern? Here. Mr. Leisure? Here. Ms. Blyfart? Present. Mr. Ross? Here. Ms. Tingle? Present. <laughs> Is it again? Mr. Venata? Ms. Jackson. Present. Please join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay. I believe we are recognizing Middle School Student of the Month. Good evening. I would like to recognize Jenna Campbell as McGuffey's Middle School Student of the Month. <laughs> Jenna Campbell is McGuffey's Middle School Student of the Month for October. Student of the Month is nominated and voted on by teachers. Jenna shows consistent preparation, respect, involvement, dedication, and empathy in the middle school. We are proud of her and her attributes to McGuffey Middle School. Jenna is currently an eighth grade student. She is involved in the marching band, National Honor Society, and Student Voice. She would like to give a special shout out to Mr. Nardi. Jenna has had Mr. Nardi two years in a row and will be sad to leave his science class next year. Mr. Nari always knows how to make an awkward situation fun. <laughs> she is not sure why, but she loves to just listen to him teach. Her advice to the students following in her footsteps is to just stay focused and be confident. Everything else will come. Jenna has many upcoming events that she's looking forward to. However, she's especially days to the band trip at Disney World. Keep up the great work, Jenna. We are honored to have you at the middle school. Okay, do we have a high school student council representative? How are you guys doing tonight? Hi. So a lot has happened in McGuffey in the first two months of us being back already. First of all, 53 juniors will be taking part in the PSAT this upcoming week at school, but on their Chromebook. This is the first digital PSAT done at school. Girls from our high school business courses participate in Dress for Success event for women uh, professional, professional, sorry, sponsored by Range Resources at their like, headquarters. And Ms. Lee business classes also select, I think it was 30 students, I believe, we're selected to go down to Claysville Community Center and get to learn a bit of, little bit about entrepreneurship, a little bit about how you can kind of create your own business from scratch. And it was a very useful event. I was there. It was amazing. It was a very fun time. We did a scavenger hunt, too. I, I haven't done a scavenger hunt in, like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know, maybe 10 years since I was in, like, first grade. It was awesome, though. <laughs> Parent-teacher conferences were held on October 16th at our school. It was a great day. I was out of school. I had fun. Uh, juniors and seniors attended the College and Career Fair at Penn West University on Tuesday with over 30 schools and universities present, along with technical school, schools, trade unions, and branches of the military. Juniors and seniors can sign up for the ASVAB test being admitted on December 14th at high school. Some sports updates for you guys. There's a lot of these. So, Cross country, both boys and girls have both won the section championship. They are also finished runner-up. They also finished runner-up and in third place in the Washington County meet. Both teams are currently prepping for the WPI AL Individual Championships on Thursday. The golf team made the team playoffs, finishing as section runner-up. Two individuals, Logan Crow and Brody Wagner, 
qualified for the WPAL Individual Championships. The girls' soccer team just missed the playoffs, but the future is very bright with almost their whole team returning and a lot of great eighth graders coming up. The boys' soccer team finished in third place in a strong section qualified for the WPAL playoffs. They travel to Avonworth Monday night for round one of the Whitfield Champions of the Whitfield Playoffs, and the section coaches selected Coach Brian Scoop Gillespie uh, as Coach of the Year, which is a pretty good honor for him. The girls' tennis team had a successful season and did qualify for the Whitfield Playoffs, and they did though lose Week One at Swiskey Academy. Swiss, Swiskley, sorry. Uh, volleyball team right now is actually playing South Moreland at their senior night. I was just there before I came over here. And football is currently first place in the section as they get ready to play South Park tomorrow night. And then next Friday, it's the biggest game of the year against the team I'm not going to name down the road. Just be there and find out. It's going to be great. <laughs> and they get ready to host the playoff game, too, no matter what, the following Friday after that. So it's going to be big. And middle schools had an extremely successful sports year as well. The girls' softball team is currently undefeated or went undefeated. The girls' soccer team lost only one match. The boys' soccer team finished with an 8-4 and four record, and the boys' middle school football team is currently playing the team down the road, and they're 7-1 and one right now. And I don't know what the score is of that game. I'm trying to figure it out, but uh, no one's telling me. So that's all the stuff that's happened at school, and everyone's glad to be back. It's been a good first couple months, and we're just ready to keep rolling. Well, thank you. Thanks. We're glad you're back. You did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, guys. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye. At this time, we will. Um, no. Madam okay. President, I'd like to make a motion to add to the agenda to put the McGuffey Alumni Foundation fundraiser as presented. I second. Uh, okay. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Suspension. Motion carries. After public comment. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this time we will have public comment on agenda items. Chief. Madam President, go Vicki Jordan, Buffalo Township. Vicki Jordan, Buffalo Township. Um, I have a couple things I want to address, but I'm going to start with the PAYS survey. I know that Mr. Bonus said that he couldn't access it, but I did. I am going to share this with him. What I'm going to ask of the board is before you vote on this, I think you should all review it. I think his presentation was great, and I think the causes that they're looking to support is a, not a bad thing. I think before you vote on this, you should really see how invasive the questions are on here. I have several that really troubled me, and it starts off, are you male, female, or other? There's only two genders. And I don't know why we want to even suggest to students as young as sixth grade that there may not be. So I just would like, since this isn't something that has to be determined yet, that you table it, review the survey before you make a decision. I don't know how you make an educated decision on whether or not you think this is okay. Are you guys all right? You're interrupting my time. I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about this. And I find some of the questions on here disturbing. I don't know why we want to subject students as young as sixth grade to some of the questions of questionnaire. Maybe high school is appropriate, but I have questions about it. So I'm just gonna ask you to table it till you all can get your hands on a copy of it and review it, and you can make an educated decision on whether you think the benefits are actually there for the students. Okay, so moving on. On the superintendent's report on the agenda, it has an item on here about uni Willing University School District affiliation agreement, but I don't remember Dr. Ober talking about that. So I don't know if 
It's something that's still being voted on, but my only question about it was, um, under background, it said, um, has submitted a school district affiliation agreement with McGuffey School District for the purposes of field experience and or student teaching. So I was just curious what the student teaching portion of that was. Um, I would also like to request when you get to item on the winter assistant coaches that you vote individually and not as a group. And the other thing I would like to add is, um, we'll do this one real quick. The budget for the um, maintenance, the sports, main, the baseball budget, it says on here 23-24 fiscal budget, and they want the whole $3,500 transferred for the wild things. But my question is for um, girls softball for spring. What budget of that 3500 do they need to maintain the fields if this is a request to designate the entire fund? And then the last thing I have is in regard to policy 918 and on down, um, I did a little research, and I'm sure the solicitor is all, all over this. Um, but I did find out, because I know it had been questioned, if that ruling had been upheld. And what I read was that, um, and this came from the attorneys representing Pensbury School District, that at, almost after a year of litigation, the board settled the lawsuit and paid $300,000 in attorney fees and nominal damages to the families. And then PSBA put, a policy, put the policy under review for change following that court's ruling. So I would just like to ask before you vote on it again that I'm going to again request that maybe you change some of the verbiage. I will also say through my research I found that abusive language is not covered and threats. If you do either one. Oh, um, I'm sorry. You're right. That's actually not on the agenda tonight. I wasn't thinking of that. Oh, was it removed? Yeah, it's no. That, no, we, we talked about it. it. Well, we had tabled it last month, but we didn't bring it back this month. I thought Dr. Ever talked about no, policy 918. No, that, it is. Yes, he did. He, is. he absolutely did. Family, yeah. No, 918 is the parent family engagement. It's different. It's not the same one you're it's not, I'm sorry, guys. No, I'm sorry. I've been here going, was taking notes, and then like, oh wait, that's not on the agenda. Because <laughs> yeah. we we did table that last month, and we did not bring it back this month, pending. Revision. Okay. All right. Okay. I apologize. I don't know I why I thought that 918 was that yeah, policy. No, that's a different one. No, well, clearly I, one. I missed one, and you're all lucky. You're <laughs> off the hook. Thank you. <laughs> so I appreciate your time, and like I said, I just really wish you will table the PAYS survey until you all review it, and I will send a link to that survey to every one of you on your board, on your district email, email so that you can review it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, President, uh, Marjorie Florin, East Finley Township. Good evening, everyone. Marjorie Florin, East Finley Township. Um, a lot of my concerns were for uh, Policy 137, which has been cleared up to the most part before even um, talking with you guys. So I don't really have much on that right now. Um, <clears throat> other than in the Pennsylvania law for homeschooling, um, which I have read, and I don't, I don't know if you said that, Joni, but a lot of homeschooling parents don't read the law. I read it, and I read it, like, thoroughly because – I was a first-time homeschooler, so I wanted to know what I was getting into and what I was expected to do as a parent for my children. Um, one of my concerns, though, is how when I did con – I didn't know there's actually a person affiliated with the school that can help parents um, for through homeschooling. There's actually a person in McGuffey that helps, I believe – 
leaves it. Yeah. No, 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 okay. no. But just okay. to clear that up, um, the superintendent, all the paperwork goes to the superintendent. The superintendent is the superintendent's office is the one where that paperwork is held. Mm -hmm. um, it's submitted, that kind of thing. But there is not like a liaison okay. for homeschool parents okay. in the district. Okay. Well, when, right, okay. So whenever I um, homeschooled my children in 2020, I had read in the law that the school district was to, if the parent were to ask for the curriculum, um, that that should be given available to the parent. And I thought that I, that was what I had read, but when I called the school, I was told no, that those materials were not available for me. And in turn, I was a little bit upset, and I spent $1,200 uh, for my kids' curriculum that year, and it really would have been nice to save that money. Um, so a little bit upset about that, but um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else. To, I mean, I had a lot written, and then now you don't have to hear it. So thank you. <laughs> I hope you guys missed me. Last month was my daughter's first birthday. I wasn't here, but thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Last Madam President, uh, Jackie Hofer. Okay. She's sorry. I'm sorry, Jackie. Jackie Hofer. Oh, Savannah. I just couldn't get to see you. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, Jackie Hovannik, South Franklin Township. I just wanted to start by saying I've been homeschooling for the past four years in McGuffey, and I've always had great experience dealing with the administration and the ladies who work there and sending my letters and turning in my things. So I've always um, boasted to other moms in other districts how great McGuffey's been to homeschool. Um, so that being said, really I just had a question if anyone could clarify more so what Dr. Oberg was saying. I think some of us are still confused what um, 137 says, because we thought it was the same, but he said that one part was revised. But we're tr I'm still trying to grasp I, what the time, difference was. This is your comment, so I can't answer your question, but oh, when okay. we get to that part in the regular meeting, I'll be okay. happy to address that. Okay, then that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam President, that, that's all. Can I ask a favor? I had a minute left, and I forgot really one important part because I let myself get flustered. Can I can I have that? I don't care. That's fine. Are you okay with yeah. it? You can have it has, five minutes. I'm calling it. I'll be quick. It has to do with the pay survey, and I apologize for not including this. But per Pennsylvania school code section 1526. It specifically states, this policy shall apply in any situation where a student is expressing suicidal thoughts or intentions of self-harm on school property, at any school-sponsored activity, or any public vehicle providing transportation. Um, this policy is also a uh, shall also apply following a suicide attempt. Anyway, my point is there are questions on this on this survey that ask a child if they're suicidal or if they have suicidal ideation. So what my concern is whether this is anonymous or not, per Pennsylvania school code, that has to be reported if a child says that expresses that on school property. So it's just something for the solicitor to look into. Um, and and on a, even on a bigger picture, morally, if you have a student an take this survey and they answer that and it's never addressed and they do something, that kind of lands kind of close to home. Thank you. For Thank you. Thank that you. That's all. She's That's all. Thank you. Okay. I need a motion to 
motion to approve the minutes of September 21st, 2023 full board meeting as the minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay, in a motion to approve the general fund scheduled bills from September 29th to October 19th, 2023, check 78251 to 78393 and the amount of $1,036,815.16 submitted. Second. Second. Out of my mouth. <laughs> so, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the food service schedule of bills dated October 19, 2023, check 7711 to 7725, and the amount of $66,169.83 as submitted. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carried. I need a motion to approve the treasurer's report for the month of September 2023 as submitted. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension, motion carries. I need a motion to approve the school district affiliation agreement between, Will, between Wheeling University and McGuffey School District for field experience and or student teaching. The term of the agreement would be for 2023-2024 academic year. So moved. Any discussion? I will just say the question was asked, and just to be clear, um, this would be so that Wheeling University students who are in the education um, program can do student teaching. And do so observation. And observation. Yeah. That's what that is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. We need a motion to accept a grant of $1,000 from Alice Boone Maine Memorial Fund, Permagoffey School District Policy Number 702, mm -hmm. Gifts, Grants, and Donations. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carried. And thank you to the Alice Boone Main Memorial Fund. And that's one for new schools. Yeah. 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 And that's about a great that. legacy. She was a pianist when we were that age. I was telling you personally, Alice and I wrote the class together when I was in yeah. grade school. She was a little bit older than I was. And I had to get that in there, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and we were both in the band. Yeah. Do we have any idea who applied to it? Did somebody apply for it? I think it's just I general. Think they just grant. Yeah, it's just a grant. It's, it's as far general. as I know. Yeah, the way I read it. I need a motion to approve students in grades 6, 8, 10, and 12 to participate in the 2023 Pennsylvania Youth Survey at no cost to the district. I make a motion to table this. I second. Okay, so we have a motion to table. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Oh. Okay, roll call please. Um, sure. <laughs> Second. I can't imagine why you can't speak. Okay, I forgot to couple my office. That's okay. So, Mr. Ross. Uh, no to table? Yes, this is under the vote to table. So no to table, he says. Okay. Five parts, yes to table. Yes. Mr. Ains? Yes, to table. Ms. Dingle? This is to table? This is to table. Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mr. Hardin? No. Mr. Leisure? No. Mr. Jackson? Yes, to table. Five, three, to table. So at that point, it has been tabled. Um, just so that we don't leave Mr. Bonus <laughs> like in limbo. Uh, no, I'm just. No, I just want to be clear on we're tabling it to bring it back next month. Um, and in that month, I would ask the school board members who asked for it to be tabled to be ready to vote on it at that time. I would appreciate that. Okay. I think November 16th is the meeting.
Okay. Again, I want to say to you, thank you for the presentation. I appreciate all the work that went into it. Um, and I do really appreciate the options for transparency. Thank you. Um, and we are going to put it back on the agenda for next month. So. It'll just be too late. We don't know that. It may be. He's just warning us. We don't know that it is. I do, I do want to say thank you for all the options to opt out. I think that was something that was fearful. And I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. I agree with uh, Ms. Vicki's comment there about the gender thing, but we don't make the form. The form comes to us. So we can't, we have no control over that. All they want is the data. I could keep my child on that day or I could opt out. Thank you. Okay, moving on. I need a motion to approve as listed the additional members of the Chapter 339 Guidance Advisory Committee. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carried. I need a motion to approve Girls on the Run and Kids of Steel as school activities at Joe Walker for the 2023-2024 school year at no cost to the district. So, Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstention? Or I thought, opposed? That abstention? Motion carried. I was ahead of myself there. Dr. Oberg, do we have need of agenda? No. Oh, wait, 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 Dr. Oberg, I forgot H6. H6 is um, the McGuffey Alumni Fundraiser. I need a motion to approve the McGuffey Alumni Fundraiser as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Dissension? Motion carries. We will let Mr. Bruce know that it has passed. Now, Dr. Oberg, do we have need of executive session? Yes, ma'am. President for personnel and contracts. Okay. I need a motion for executive motion session. Executive session. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Sentence. We move to executive session at 7.33 p.m.